Hi, and welcome to our video, 22.1 Organic Chemistry. Uh, this is going to be a great unit just because it is very, very easy, hardly anything to memorize. Most of the stuff is really just in utilizing the uh, reference tables. I mean, it's so easy that I remember getting to college and when I was going to take organic chemistry, I thought, oh, great, this is going to be easy. And huh, that was quite a different thing. But the high school regents, organic chemistry is going to be nice and simple. So organic chemistry is the study of carbon-based compounds. So pretty much everything in organic chemistry is going to be the main element is going to be carbon. And organic molecules are based on chains or rings of carbon atoms with hydrogens attached. So you'll have, you know, chains of carbons with hydrogens attached here, there, and everywhere. Or you can even have a ring of carbon atoms with hydrogens attached. So chains and rings of carbons. In any molecule, each carbon forms four covalent bonds. So carbon is going to be bound to four other things. They can be carbons, they can be hydrogens, or they can be other atoms, but each carbon is going to be bonded to four different things. Now, they might not all be single bonds like this. You could also have double bonds. So in a case where it's a double bond, right, you have a carbon bonded to another carbon. Double bonds, each one has room for two more for a total of one, two, three, four for this carbon and one, two, three, four for this carbon. In general, in organic chemistry, we're dealing with molecules that are nonpolar. And if it's nonpolar, it generally won't be water soluble and non electrolyte, so they won't conduct electricity when they're in water as well. <clears throat> okay, so when we have carbons that are single bonded to each other, generally those are alkanes. When there's a double bond, it's an alkene, and you'll also see triple bonds, leaving room for one more bond each. Those are alkynes. For the most part, hydro hydrocarbons are made simply of hydrogen and carbon. And the important part about it is the carbon chain. And that's how many carbons you count in the chain. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So this would be a six carbon chain. And as the length of the chain increases, so the longer it gets, the boiling point increases. They become less flammable the longer they get. So the shorter ones, if it's like one carbon, is going to be the most flammable. And as we get more carbons in our chain here, it's going to become less flammable. They become more viscous, meaning they don't flow as easily, kind of like thicker and sludgier would be a way to think of it and they become less volatile. Volatile is, the more volatile something is, the more easily it evaporates. So the less volatile something is, the less easily it evaporates. Now one of the more common things you're gonna have to be able to do is name hydrocarbons. And the main thing to remember about naming hydrocarbons is the number of carbon atoms in the chain is key. So step one, you're going to count the longest carbon chain and use the organic prefix here from table P. All right, so if we look at some of these, we count the carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five. So we look down to five and pent. Step two, we're going to look for any side chains. Okay, so you see here we have one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, and a side chain. And for that, we would use the organic prefix with an O. So we count the carbons in the side chain. There's one, so it's meth. We add the O. So 
methyl. So this would be methyl. One, two, three, four, but. So this would be methyl. And we'll see in a moment, butane. Step three, the main functional group gives the suffix. So if there's if they're all single bonds like this, the suffix is ane. All single bonds here, so this was one, two, three, four, five. This was pentane. Here, let's see the longest chain. One, two, three, or one, two, three. So the longest chain is three. So that's going to be a propane. And there's one methyl group attached to it, two methyl groups. So this would be di methyl propane. If there's any double bonds, like let's say there was a double bond here, then it would be pentene. And if there was a triple bond here, it would be pentine. Okay, so for example, pentane. Pentene and pentine. Go back here. There we go. Pentene and pentine. Single bond, double bond, triple bond. Okay, now you can also have what's called isomers. And an isomer is something where they have the same molecular formula but different structural arrangements. And when we're dealing with organic molecules, it becomes really, really important because they'll have different properties. Okay, so here, this is just butane. And the N just means normal. So one, two, three, four carbons is but, all single bonds, so it's butane. Now look at this, one, two, three, four, so it's C4, H, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. C4, H10. What about this here? 1, 2, 3, 4, C, 4, H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, C, 4, H, 10. So they have the same number of carbons and same number of hydrogens, but the structure is different. Here, the longest carbon chain is 1, 2, 3, making it a propane, because it's all single bonds, with a methyl group attached. So it's methyl protein, methyl propane, same molecular formula but different structures. Now, here's another example. One, two, three, four carbons. C4. H1, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. H9. OH. We kind of keep those together. Here. One, two, three, four. C4. H. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. OH, because we keep those together. However, this here, while they look much more similar, the OH is on the end carbon here, and here it's on the second from the end. So they'll also have slightly different properties. Now, one thing when we're trying to figure out isomers we have to be careful for is atoms can rotate around single bonds. So these can kind of get all bendy. That's why when we count the longest chain, we have to be careful. Well, here it goes, C, 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 O, H. So we look here, C, 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 O, H. Same thing. C, 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 O, H. Same thing. C, 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 O, H. Same thing. Now here, C, C, C with the O, H to the middle carbon. Here, C, C, C with the O, H to the middle carbon. Okay, so they can frequently, the same exact thing with the same formula and structure can just be spun around a little bit differently. So you got to be careful when you count them. Okay, so homologous series of hydrocarbon. Basically what that's going to be is our alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. All right, now here, alkanes are going to have the general formula of CnH2n plus 2. So if it's C1, H would be 2 times 1 plus 2, so it would be CH4. If you have C2, H would be 2 times 2, or 4 plus 2, 6. 
and so on and so forth. These are said to be saturated. I like to think of it as there's no spare bonds, right? There's no, like, when we get up to these alkenes and alkynes, these double bonds, you can break one of them, and now you'd have room. This would, if we broke this, made it a single bond, then there's room for one more here and room for one more here. So there, those would be spare bonds. There's no spare bonds here. And <clears throat> they're generally not as reactive as your alkenes and alkynes. Alkenes, formula CnH2n. So there, there we would have like Fc3H6. C4H2 times 4 is 8. Right. These are unsaturated because as we saw, if we break this double bond and change it to just a single bond, there's room for two more. And they're going to be more reactive because these double bonds aren't nearly as stable as single bonds. Finally, alkynes, right here, there's going to be a triple bond involved. And the general formula is CnH2n minus 2. So if it was C4, it would be 2n minus 2 for the H. So it would be C4H6, C5H8, etc., etc. All right, these are also unsaturated, and they're going to be even more reactive than the alkenes. So have you seen here, most of the things that we would need to know, other than the fact that they're nonpolar, okay, uh, is pretty much right on the reference table. So that makes this one nice and easy. All right, that brings us to the end of 22.1. I will see you guys at school.